At the dawn of the skyscraper era, height was merely a means, not an end. This notion gradually lost significance over time, especially in the late Roaring Twenties, when being the tallest turned into a frantic race. But then came the Great Depression, bringing an end to an entire epoch. It took 40 years for someone to dare to reach for the skies again, and perhaps the wait was worthwhile, as they did so by reclaiming the essence of constructing these steel and concrete titans. Minoru Yamasaki, the outstanding architect who designed the Twin Towers, wanted to go all in. He didn't just plan to build towering structures, he envisioned them with significant capacity, all while, in his own words, maintaining the human scale. And it must be emphasized in the plural, for he was unique in that aspect too. They were to be twins. Architecture was once again stirring our emotions, just when it seemed a grand era was reborn, another economic crisis struck, and time stood still once more. For nearly 30 years, Yamasaki's creation reigned, until Samsung and Hazama Corp commissioned architect Cesar Pelli to give birth to a new set of twins. And so, the Petronas Towers were born. Located in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia, and constructed with concrete, steel and glass, they boast 88 floors and a height of 1,483 feet up to the tip of the spire. The towers feature a double-decker skybridge connecting the two towers on the 41st and 42nd floors, making it the highest two-story bridge in the world. Each tower is set back five times in its ascent to maintain the vertical axis and tapering of the design. The walls of the uppermost floors also slope inward to taper and meet the pinnacle. The pinnacles house aircraft warning lights and external maintenance building equipment. Each pinnacle features a spire with 23 segments and a ring ball comprised of 14 rings of varying diameters. Vision glass, specialized panels with light filtering and noise reduction properties, provide a comfortable inner environment. The glass is covered by stainless steel visors to further protect visitors from the tropical sun. Each tower weighs 300,000 tons, which is equivalent to about 42,857 adult elephants. The construction of the Petronas Twin Towers took six years and cost the country over RM6 billion, USD 1.6 billion dollars to complete. The essence we were referring to at the beginning should not be forgotten. Skyscrapers weren't born to break height records but to create space where there was none. And what you're about to witness is precisely what this building has achieved. Almost 4.3 million square feet of built space between the two towers. Or, as Yamasaki used to say, trying not to lose the human scale, a space equivalent to 81 football fields. Or the place to park 84 Boeing 747s. Now let's focus on the twin towers of the World Trade Center, because if what the Petronas Towers achieve is impressive, what this marvel contained is simply extraordinary. But before we dive into those details, let's talk about some basic facts, although it's very likely you're already familiar with them. The twin towers of the World Trade Center, located in Lower Manhattan, New York, had slightly different heights, the North Tower reached an impressive height of approximately 1,368 feet, 417 meters, while the South Tower was a few feet shorter to aesthetically balance the terrain's unevenness. Construction began in August 1966 and was completed in 1973. These steel and glass towers became an iconic symbol of the World Trade Center complex and the New York skyline, housing offices for various companies and organizations. The last floor was situated at a height of 1,362 feet, 415 meters, and if we include the antenna, the total height of the North Tower reached around 1,727 feet, 526 meters. Unfortunately, as you undoubtedly know, on September 11, 2001, the Twin Towers were destroyed, causing nearly 3,000 casualties when hijacked planes crashed into them. 
but we have said that the World Trade Center Twin Towers concealed something not of this world. And the statement is not a complete exaggeration because attention, one of these towers alone offered more surface area than the two Petronas Towers combined. We're talking about over 8.6 million square feet of combined horizontal space. That's enough to accommodate many football fields. Something like over 160. But also to accommodate many larger objects, such as, for example, the summit of Mount Rushmore with the busts of the presidents, about 150 times. Skyscrapers can be many things. They can be a stylistic statement or a true architectural masterpiece. In engineering, a challenge to our capabilities, and they can also be an immense symbol of power. But above all, fundamentally, they are available space space gained from the sky, from the void, from that dimension that has long been unattainable. That's why they are so important and extraordinary. And no skyscraper has been as much so as the twin towers of the World Trade Center, without a doubt the largest skyscrapers in history and the most missed. To conclude, but in order to do so, understanding well to what extent both architects and developers achieved their goal of creating the most efficient and usable building in history, I believe there's nothing better than planning the residential city for 1 billion inhabitants using only this masterpiece, an eighth part of the world's population in a space just over 15 miles on each side, less than 250 square miles. In that same space, if we take New York City as a reference, we would be talking about around 20 million people, 24, if we consider its total 320 square miles, 50 times less. And it's true that the comparison is not fair because New York City is not solely residential, but it serves to give us an idea of how magnificent this building was, and how little space it would take to fit all of mankind. And now, I'd like to ask you a question. Would you live in a city like that? I'll read your comments. I hope you have enjoyed the content. Until next time.